G'day. In this video, I want to talk about the top five tips for preventative maintenance on your caravan slash car before you head out on a long trip. And if you choose not to, like me, you might find a little bit of carnage on your way. Anywho, let's go. Now I know it shouldn't, but it does. The um, trailer, hit, trailer connector has twice managed to come out and so has the um, Anderson plug. So the Anderson plug comes from the car, goes back to the DC-DC and then charges the battery, which then runs the fridge. And the, this is just a standard uh, trailer connector. However, what I would suggest you do is before you leave or if you can when you get some spare time sounds dramatic pull it apart as delicate as possible without really pulling it apart once it's apart and you uh, break this in half then take a photo of all of the cables um, all of the wires coming in to the particular uh, connectors because apparently they can be uh, pretty, tri pretty tricky to uh, wire back up I'm so the guy that fixed it last time had charged me an exceptional amount of money. So uh, yeah, when you get a chance or make a chance, pull it apart, pull it apart, take a photo of all the coloured wires going in, in what order. Make certain you've got saying left, right, and then it goes, for instance, yellow, orange, blue, green, red, etc. Then hook it back up. The other thing I suggest you do is go to one of the uh, auto stores and buy a spare one of these. And maybe go online and buy a four pack or a six pack of your Anderson plugs because you can seriously never have too many but if you have to buy one in town they can cost quite a lot of money just for one so yeah that's gonna do it and the other thing I've done this is my idea <laughs> another hairbrain idea but pretty confident it might work so I'm putting that back into the Anderson plug make sure it's locked in a little trick I've come up with, I don't know whether it'll work, but it's certainly better than it's nothing at all. These little doodads here, it's like a form of an ocker strap, I suppose. Basically, they look like this, like that. And you get them in a pack, I bought mine, it's super cheap. You get them in a pack, I probably would suggest, I may even change this to a shorter one. This is the blue one is the longer, then it goes, oh. It goes red and uh, black, I think. But basically what I've done is I've run that through the um, through the trailer hitch. And yeah, go around there, through the trailer hitch. Then hook this around and have it so it's reasonably tight that in the event that the... Um, that it fell out on the road it won't actually hit the road it'll just fall out and be suspended and you should have an indicator inside the car because your brake lights your bra um, braking in the trailer light should come off so it's not working anymore and if you keep yeah that's basically the only thing so keep an eye on that but it's certainly better than if it falls off like it just did easily then falls onto the ground you've lost another one and you either have to rewire it or take it to a mechanic and get it done again and you don't want to do that everything I've talked about so far has been about prevention and maintenance and getting ready to go on the road now if you don't do that maintenance and you have a bit of bad luck and go on a dirt track like I did it's actually a road and you have multiple boulders throwing up on the undercarriage of the caravan you could be unlucky 
and have what happened to me. So that's why I'm saying this next section is about having a good look at your drainage system. It's pretty cheap to replace, but if you have to replace it out on the road, it can be quite an expensive expedition. So let's check that out. Now, I'm not deliberately trying to make things hard for myself, but I don't know whether you can see that. Hopefully you can. The um, being an off-road van, off-road, that's fine on most things, but this PVC piping has got old and brittle over a period of time. And in my last uh, little trip on a track, well, they called it a road. Don't know how they got that name sorted out. But anyway, on the last track, um, Stones come up and started cracking and they cracked it all over the place. So I'm going to replace the entire thing. I'm going to show you how to do it. <laughs> Me showing you. It's just that I'm a little bit over going to caravan places who uh, say, oh yeah, we can do it. And you know, several hundred if not thousands of dollars later, it's done, done a great job. But really, I could probably give it a pretty good bash for the money that they're charging. So, uh, want to join along? Let's check it out. Okay, first thing we're going to do is spray some WD-40 on this nut. Preferably not in my eyes. Done that before. Let it soak for five or ten minutes. I imagine I've just fast forwarded five or ten minutes because I'm impatient. <laughs> Hopefully find the right spanner size. Nope, not too big, too small. Like the three little bears, I think this is just right. Yay, it's off. Now right, clean that nut and bolt up. Make it a bit easier to get back on. Next on the menu is to undo this. I don't know which undoes first. I think it's probably this one here. Right, let's undo this. If I can memorise all this. Short term, long term memory cells. Any cells will be good. Okay, I'm up to that stage where it's uh, measure twice cut once or is it measure once cut twice <laughs> it's not going to make too much difference certainly as long as i don't cut it too short now uh, as you can see from that photo what i've done is i've duplicated everything <laughs> i hope to be exactly the same so the only thing is a couple of things were a little bit too long so um here we go the old one broken and that went in there and then the pipe coming yeah or whatever and the new one is that one hey pretty cool eh now the only thing I can see <laughs> what could possibly go wrong the only thing I can see that could be a bit of a problem is the order you glue it um, and also making things the moment this is too long by quite a lot so I've got to cut it short and then stick it in and once it's kind of done to that stage that's when I put the glue and it's important I put the glue in a certain um, order because if I don't then there'll be a problem oh well here we go right too long by a lot long way The old one was that one. Rehearsal two.
sometimes overlooked. It's definitely worth having a dash cam if for no other reason but to give to the insurance company if you need to make a claim or if there's a drama. And also you should be able to take the SD card out and view the footage yourself. If you're going to have one, make certain you know how to use it, how to put the SD card in, how to take it out and how to make a recording. Now I'm not suggesting you go out and replace your normal tow bar and tow ball, but if you've got the option, if you're doing a long trip, these are a great uh, alternative to the normal ball and the uh, coupling that sits over it. The advantage of this is the fact that um, that whole mechanism moves back and forth and uh, forward. So basically in the event of a drama with your caravan, they say technically, I don't know whether this is true, but Technically, it's possible for your caravan to roll over with a system like this and the car can still be straight on the road. So it's definitely a consideration. And to... Um, now it's ready to jack up and release. And when you put it back on, you're about to head off on the road. You put that on. Put the dust cover. Like so. Here's a random tip for you. Now I love these, it's called the D035, DO35. And um, it's basically a different kind of mechanism instead of like the little ball and the, the classic one you have on a normal car and trailer. I've converted mine over uh, on my travels and uh, settled for this. There's a couple of variations on it. Now, uh, as much as I love it, and I've got to say, it saved me in one particular instance with prevented my car caravan rolling over. So. Uh, I'm very grateful for that. Now the thing is they supply you with a little dust cover and um, I have spent literally minutes and minutes and minutes, it doesn't sound like long but it just gets so laborious trying to get the cover on and you can never work out whether you put the front on and then you push the back or the back and you push the front. Anyway just recently I've come up, whoop, come up with this little idea, put it on fairly securely and didn't work. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's a great idea. Here we are. But <laughs> the relative ease compared to normally. Normally what I'll do is, and it doesn't have to be rubber mallet, I've got a uh, big chunky steel one, not sure what they call lump hammer, and a normal good old fashioned garden grown hammer. Usually just use this part of it, push it to the front, hold down the back, hit it one hit, done. So <laughs> it normally works really great. That's a handy little hint. Not sure if you've seen these before, you may have. They're called a stone stomper. Now I've read a few uh, forums where people have attempted to do it themselves by making up canvas and so on and so forth. Realistically, unless you're super, super talented, don't bother. They're pretty reasonably priced. Um, I happened to get mine uh, second hand and modified it basically for the van. However, what happened on a recent trip was the, um, the uh, stomper, I think, got too close to the ground as I was going up and down over bumps. What had happened was it put two holes into the... Um, into the mesh, so that caused me all sorts of grief. However, I got really, really lucky. I was in Exmouth and I made a few calls and there's only one guy in town who does canvas repairs. Took it to him and he said, oh yeah, I should be able to do that. And I've got exactly the same material. So, major bonus. Um, now the reason I bring all that up is I've now made a modification and run a little a rope from one side up to the um, the tow ball and then back just to not to be not to be too strong against it but just to keep keep it lifted a little bit off the ground so hopefully that'll sort it but otherwise they're seriously they're such a great idea protects all the front of your caravan and also 
pretty much 100% protects the stones coming up and smashing the back window. And you think that's pretty unlikely. <laughs> You'd be surprised how likely it is. So uh, and having a smashed back window is not like a windscreen. They just don't have them out in the middle of the bush. So that can be a drama in all, by, all in by itself. If you're going to drive away and disconnect the uh, stomper itself, probably a good idea to wrap this thing over because I'm a bit fearful that the canvas may rip as it's flapping around at speed and um, don't want added expense. The way I do it is just wrap it over reasonably tight and run one of these. I'm not sure where you get it. It says it's, uh, it is branded but basically it's a piece of Velcro and then the Velcro connects onto itself like so. Pull through. Well there you have it, five top tips for preventive maintenance before you get out on the track that should help your car and or your caravan. And as you can see, it can be a bit of a drama if you're already out in the middle of the nowhere and you need to get stuff done, especially at $145 an hour plus parts. Now I did try desperately to get you some discounts, but I wasn't able to at this stage. But if you keep an eye on my webpage, which is www.poorwheeldrive.com, then any updates or discounts, I'll put them straight up there for you. If you found the video helpful, useful or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. And until next time, this is Paul Wheel Drive, signing off. <laughs>